Hello everyone, welcome to this session. Uh, let's discuss about the oxidation state. Uh, so far in our previous video, uh, we were discussing about the empirical formula and the molecular formula. Uh, we discussed the uh, also uh, various vivid examples concerning these two, the molecular formula and the empirical formula. So today let's move on to the uh, oxidation state. So we'll start with the concept of the oxidation state. Uh, the oxidation state or the oxidation number, simply it gives you the information uh, about the number of the elements an element has just lost, gained, or shared on forming a compound. So oxidation state, or you can simply call it uh, oxidation number, is just that uh, information that uh, gives out the details of a number of electrons that an element has just lost or gained or just shared during forming a compound. Now, an element gains, uh, losses or shares the electron or just the electrons only when it reacts to form a compound. So apart from when it reacts to form a compound, an element just it doesn't gain, loses or or shares the electrons. Now an element in a free state, whereby we're talking about when it has, uh, in a condition whereby it cannot react to other elements to just form a compound, uh, in that state, an oxidation state of given element uh, is zero. So the, an element in a free state has an oxidation state of zero. Uh, there's a cause correlation between the valence and the oxidation state. Uh, we talked about the valence in our previous videos. Uh, the oxidation state of an atom in a compound is normally assigned to the other elements in that particular compound. So take an example, maybe if you find that the oxidation state of a particular atom may change depending uh, on a compound in which it is. Uh, for instance, uh, the, oxygen, the oxidation state of the sulfur is SO2, uh, I mean, the oxy oxidation state of sulfur in SO2 is uh, plus four, whereas uh, in SO3 is plus six. So there you have it. So the oxidation state of a particular atom, yes, may change depending on the company in which it is. So when it, for instance, this the oxygen state of sulfur uh, in a, uh, SO2 is plus four, so in this, uh, compound is, is, is plus four, whereas in SO3 is plus six. So it's clear uh, to this concept. Now, while oxidation state uh, is arbitrarily assigned, balance is a fixed value. So oxidation state uh, simply it is assigned uh, to an element during uh, a reaction. Balance is fixed the value, you can't change the valence, but oxidation state is is arbitrarily assigned or just changes according to the uh, reaction of that element uh, to another compound. Now, however, the oxidation state of uh, the positive and the negative ions is exactly equal to the valence of the uh, atoms, so that you have to note it. Now, this is the oxidation state uh, may be assigned a positive number or a negative number. Now, let's see various rules for the assigning the oxygen uh, numbers or the oxygen state. The number one rule, an oxygen state of an element in a free or uncombined state is always zero. As an example, the sodium, lithium, potassium, zinc, etc., etc. So, just the oxygen state of any element in free or talking about the uncombined state whereby it is not reacting with the other element is always zero. The second rule, uh, some elements nearly always have the same oxygen number in their compounds. These elements, they can be used as their reference points in assigning oxygen numbers to their other elements. For example, uh, fluorine, now this compound shows an oxygen number of minus one. Uh, another example, fluorine in all these compounds has an oxygen number of minus one, except when it uh, combined with fluorine or oxygen. So some elements nearly always have the same oxidation number in their compounds. So 
in this case means that they, they are they are saying the uh this oxidation uh number is like almost like the same or constant in throughout the, their compounds. So these elements they can be uh, used as reference points in assigning their oxidation number to their other elements when combining. Uh, more examples in this is that oxidation in all these compounds has an oxidation state of minus two except in the peroxides where it has an oxidation state of minus one and the oxygen difluoride uh, that is OF2 in which is uh, uh, in which it has an oxidation state of uh, plus two. Also, hydrogen in all its compounds exhibits uh, an oxygen state of uh, plus one, except in metal hydroxides, where it shows an oxygen state of minus one. Also, potassium in all its compounds exhibits an oxygen state uh, of uh, plus one. So there you have it uh, with plenty of examples in this rule. The third rule is that the algebraic sum of the oxygen numbers of all elements in a radical, like an example is of all is equal to the charge possessed by the radical. Take an example, the surface radical, that is SO4, which is minus two. So that is the other rule for the assigning station numbers uh, for the radicals. So the algebraic sum of the relation numbers of elements in the radical is, is just equal to the charge possessed by the given radical. The fourth rule, uh, the algebraic sum of the relation numbers in a neutral molecule or a compound is always equal to zero. So that's the fourth rule. The fifth rule, the oxygen number uh, of an element in a monoatomic ion is the same as the charge uh, on the ion. As you can see the examples, uh, the sodium ion has also plus one magnesium ion, plus two ion, three also has three plus uh, chlorine as minus one, Oxygen also has minus two, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So the oxidation number of an element in just a monatomic ion here are talking about in a in a form of a single ion is just the same as the charge on the ion, as you've seen the examples. Uh, the last one is the sixth law in the binary compounds of a metal and non-metal. The oxidation number of metal is always positive, while that of a non-metal is negative. So when you're talking about the binary compounds and the compounds that are made up of two uh, elements of maybe of metal and nonmetals, the oxygen number of metals will always remain positive, while that of the nonmetals will always remain negative. An example in sodium chloride, the oxygen number of the sodium is plus one and that of the chlorine is minus one. So I hope it's clear with all of these laws. Uh, for the assigning the oxidation numbers or the oxidation state. Now let's see the calculations of the oxidation numbers. Here we'll see the various examples, uh, various of the examples. I think the first example, uh, find the oxidation state of the chlorine in a compound, uh, this uh, K -K -L -O, KCL3 so, solution. Uh, so here we are, we are supposed to find the oxidation state of the chlorine in this compound. So the compound, it consists of the potassium, the chlorine, and the oxygen. Now, we are required to find the oxidation state of the chlorine. So solution, the oxidation number of the potassium, and that is K, is plus one, and that of the oxygen is minus two. But since there are three oxygen atoms, we have to multiply by three, that is equal to minus six. Now, KCLO3, is a neutral compound. So the sum of the oxygen numbers of, L, of all the elements in the compound is zero. So that we have to note it as we've said before in the laws. So in this compound, it's just a neutral compound. So the sum of the oxygen numbers of all the elements in the compound is zero. Now from there, you can just obtain the oxygen state of the chlorine. As you can see, therefore, as you see here, plus one, uh, plus zero, that is for the chlorine plus C. That minus two times three equals to zero. So one plus zero minus six is equal to zero. Zero minus five is equal to zero. So zero is equal to positive five. So the addition number of the chlorine uh, in this compound is zero or three is plus five.
12 is clear. This is our first example. Uh, it's very simple and I think you can solve it and you can find the other examples. Uh, the last example, I find the oxygen state of the sulfur in this molecule, H2SO4, that is the sulfuric acid. So the sulfuric acid here are required to find the oxygen state of the sulfur in this molecule. So the solution, uh, the oxygen state of the oxygen uh, simply is minus two, the oxygen, the oxygen state of the hydrogen is plus one. Now the sum of the oxygen number of all the elements in this uh, H2SO4 is just equal to zero. So from there, you can find the oxygen state of sulfur within this given molecule. So therefore, just plus one times two in bracket plus this sulfur plus minus two times four in bracket equals to zero. So two plus S minus eight is equal to zero. So S will be equal to eight minus two, that is equal to six. So the oxygen state of the sulfur in this H2SO4 that is the sulfur is plus six. So there you have it, the oxygen state of the sulfur in this compound. So that's all I have for this video. I hope it's clear, guys. Thank you for listening. I will discuss the oxygen state. We've seen the concept of it. Then we have later on discuss the, the important rules that are there for the obtaining the oxygen number. And we've seen uh, two of the soft examples. I hope it's clear. And Thank you.